Good evening. Something that came up recently that I think is important to know is that though my garden looks absolutely, I think, gorgeous, and I've, some of the comments I think agree, lots of things have actually gone wrong. Um, so it's hard to sometimes show that in all the YouTube videos that we do. Um, we try to keep you guys uh, aware of things as they come up, um, but I thought I would go through and talk about what's gone wrong so far this year in our garden spaces. So a lot of it actually is about uh, just running out of time. Uh, Jace and I both work full time and so the garden is an after work and weekend project for us. And so I started some seeds really, really early this, um, usually. Um, I start things like hot peppers a lot of times around uh, end of January, February, last year when I started them. Um, this year, I didn't get to them until I think it was like mid-February, so it was a little bit later. And you'll, um, If you look back at our vlogs from last year, you'll see the difference. Um, so that, just starting behind, um, was a concern of mine this year. Um, I felt stressed the whole time of starting seeds in our basement under grow lights and feeling the pressure of not having them done. So that's number one, is always feeling a little bit behind is never a good feeling when you're starting out your new season. You got big plans of this full garden. Um, another thing that has gone wrong is some of these tomatoes. Um, so it's, a lot of times this is pretty normal, but I wanted to call it out. Um, and I could pick this guy off and see how big this one is. It's crazy. Um, this is a Cherokee carbon, it's an heirloom, but it's got a really bad spot, split open um, not great I do have a couple of those a lot of times the early um, tomatoes have a lot more splits like that um, and a lot more damage but you can cut around them it doesn't look very nice um, it's a little bit frustrating um, you can pick off those first few um, tomatoes especially the ones that are multiple uh, flowers like this one's probably a three tomatoes in one um, got the house wrens right here. Um, so, uh, so that's never fun. Um, our lettuce bolted, and so we are actually in between lettuce right now, um, which is really frustrating. We had to buy a head of lettuce at the farm stand last week. Um, so now I can start picking some of these again. Um, but it um, our lettuce out here in the garden bolted earlier than it was um, I had expected by about three weeks. So sometimes you can't plan for everything, although I do try. Um, so you'll see I have tons of little baby lettuces here that I had started. I just didn't start them early enough. So I can start picking these leaves now. They're uh, mature enough. Um, so we actually do have lettuce now, but two weeks without lettuce when you're used to having it almost every day is really really frustrating so um, not ideal we had a bunny I'm not sure if you guys watched that vlog um, dig in a, and try to do a burrow right here a den right here and I had to pick all of these carrots that were in this whole little gap hole here and the beets because it came back and started eating the beets um, much earlier than planned which is fine but that means that I only have these two bunches of mature carrots left in the entire garden while I'm waiting for the other carrots, the baby carrots. They're about, greens are about like this big, mature, and I need to plant our fall storage carrots. So it doesn't leave us with that many. I do have those in the fridge, um, but it's not as, uh, as planned, and so that kind of went wrong. Um, even with the onions, the bunnies were knocking the onions over to get in here into the bed. Um, so that was another thing that went wrong. I also have been having a lot of blossom end rot on my tomatoes. And from everything I've read on it, and I am not a professional gardener, um, it can be caused by a couple things. I think I picked off a bunch of them already. Um, the San Marzano's pastes we're having them. Here you go. 
So you can continue to grow the tomatoes and have them ripen with the rot on the bottom and just cut the rot off. Uh, is what I've been reading. Um, I've been picking them off because there's enough fruit on these plants that it doesn't really need to have a stress fruit on it. Um, but I'm having them in all the beds. And I keep figuring, trying to figure out root cause, right? Um, and a lot of what I've been reading, it sounds like blossom end rot is from a water issue. Um, water extremes, too much water, not enough water, or inconsistent watering. And so my first thought was that it was this bed only because it was the drip lines, it's new, I normally hand water all my tomatoes so I can really watch and make sure I'm giving them water when they need it. And um, I'm not doing that this year. I switched and then all of a sudden I'm seeing blossom med rot. But these beds over here, I'm hand watering. So um, that's not it. Um, we've had a little bit of a strange rain watering situation, uh, but I've been pretty consistent from what I feel of adjusting to the rain amounts um, for these. And I've never grown San Marzano's before, so I was like, mm, maybe that's it. But then the big beef and the Cherokee carbons, which I'm familiar with, also have had uh, blossom and rot. So I'm still playing around with this. I am a couple days late on doing the feed um, for these. And then I do a side dressing of all purpose. So maybe there's something um, from a nutrition standpoint that's not in the soil that I need to put in there. Um, so we'll con feed them and hopefully we'll see less of these um, end rot issues as we continue. If you guys have any tips or tricks for me, I am all ears. Um, you can see another pretty bad one right here. Um, so food for thought on that. So it's another thing that you might not see is um, all of the little pest issues or different things like that. In the hoop house, I'm having a really bad aphid issue. Um, and so I've, as I've been finding ladybugs out in the main garden, I've been bringing them into the, um, into the hoop house. I also, um, the house runs built a nest in my hose link. That was a little bit surprising. So I had to think quick and get a birdhouse there, but that having that birdhouse there has limited my activity in some of this area. Um, and since the hose link is attached to that, it has not been really ideal. But the babies are only in the nest for, I think, 12 days after hatching, so um, should be fine. But yeah, so I definitely have issues of my own in the garden. As you can see, all these pastes here. Um, here. So we'll continue to, uh, to work on those, but, um, my garden is by no means perfect. We were supposed to add three of the six in one birdies beds, two more, one here and one there. And then we added this one finally. Haven't done that. We ended up giving one of them to my parents to install and we still have one in the box. And you know, it's mid July, so a little bit late getting that going. Um, and, and that's fine, is that we don't need the space as much. Um, so that's, that's fine, it happens. I have a tomato over here. I think, I can't remember, there's a name for this. Um, but the top stopped growing. And so all the offshoots, that keep growing, keep going to fruit. And so there's a real, like, it's not getting any taller. But if you notice, there's a ton of fruit on this little tomato. Um, and so I'm kind of watching this. I'm not pruning this anymore. I'm just letting this grow and see how it does. Um, you know, you see these, these shoots and you're like, oh, it's gonna grow. And then it fruits and stops growing. So that was an issue. I had another tomato over here and there's a little bit of a hole right here where there was a tomato um about two or three weeks after i transplanted it it just died and i didn't want to have any potential of um, spreading disease so i did um, pull it pulled the soil around it added some soil back there 
and got rid of that one. And then I have leaf curl here that I can't seem to get um, back on track. You can see there's some aphids on here. It's sad. I was going back and forth on what I do, but the other plants are really healthy. You can see right next to it, very different. Same variety, I think. Yep, both Cherokee Carbon. So I was just gonna let this fruit. It's also stopped growing at the top here of the plant. Um, I'll continue to, to get the fruit ripened and as soon as that, these ripen, I'll be cutting the plant and um, pulling this one. Still leaves me with 49 tomatoes um, in this bed. So there's that. Because I started some of the plants late, I have um, some really small pepper plants compared to what I like to have for my pepper plants at this time of the year. And what that does is that means that some of the fruit will be stunted um, because of the size of the plant won't support a larger fruit. It's the new potato bed. Over here, I'm having issues with something eating a lot of my fruit or uh, peppers. Um, so this I've been keeping an eye on, but the house wrens that I ha have a living here have been coming in this bed a lot. So I'm guessing that there is a pest that they are trying to eat and um, help me um, fix in this area. So I have not treated this. Um, uh, when I say treat, I do like DE or um, neem oil or something like that um, at night and then typically we'll wash it off by the day, daytime. So not ideal, um, something to watch um, as I'm going through this. The other thing I've been having issues with is slugs. They've been climbing up all of the beds at night. So if I come out here in another hour or two, um, they will be like lining, walking up here. Oh, that's a little ladybug larva. These guys are awesome. Um, I have so many ladybugs because of all the aphid issues um, that I, uh, <laughs> I end up having larva on me when I go inside the house. There we go. So, like to see these guys. Um, they will devour a ridiculous amount of aphids. So again, another reason not for me to, to spray is there, I don't need to at this point. Overall, these plants are pretty healthy. I do need to prune these again. But it's something for me to watch, definitely. Here's another ladybug larva. Other things I've been having issues with is cabbage worms because I am so far behind covering this bed. So there's no flowers on this bed, so I covered this with DE trying to kill these worms. And I don't know if it's even working. Um, they're still alive. Um, so I'm trying here, but definitely not ideal. I need to get this bed covered. I had the hoops here and they're gonna be too small. I'm gonna have to get the bigger hoops out. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see, um, not ideal at all. So I've been trying to pick these off. Um, I'm trying DE to see what I can do. Looking at the bottoms of the leaves and I'm seeing the little babies here. Again, issues in the garden. Um, so um, with the amount that I'm doing, there's always gonna be some issue that I'm working on and trying to mitigate. Um, I had almost all my celery eaten right down that was in the low bed. I had to move all of those. Um, what else? I had um, some early rust on the green beans that I was pruning off. It seems to be okay now. So that's all right. The garlic went okay. The, pr um, the new bed over here, the bl black plastic with the cut flowers. I had issues with the um, black plastic. I've never used it before. It's a woven 
um, cover, mulch cover, whatever it's called, and I'd never used it before, and I didn't realize when I was transplanting in, any leaf that was actually touching the black plastic would get cooked, like crispy cooked, until it was actually a healthy plant. Um, I was able to recover some, but you'll see about half the stock wasn't, didn't make it. So I just went in and planted a bunch of zinnias last night over here. Same with the status, a bunch of the status didn't make it. Some of it recovered. Some of these smaller ones are ones that I planted in after. And you'll see, I, ha I have to assume that when I transplant anything that gets knocked over is gonna get cooked right down. So I'll come back in here and fill these back spots up. Um, didn't get this bed planted until really late. So zinnias are like an 80 something, 86 day, 90 something, I can't remember. Um, days to maturity. That's at the early end. So we're gonna see if I actually get some really pretty zinnias this year. I really hope I do because this whole part to about here is all zinnias. I've got some of the lime green ones, which I'm excited about. Also looks like something might have eaten a bunch of them. So that's fun. Yeah, all of these ones are gone. See a stem over there. So pest pressure is another thing. I don't have any sunflowers growing because I can't seem to start seeds without the chipmunks finding them, which is really frustrating. Um, so that's a big fail for me right now. I'm gonna try to plant some more. I'm gonna probably have to start them inside, which I'm not excited about, and um, get them to a certain height before I even bring them out here. This bed is a little disappointing. A bunch of the bulbs got eaten. So I planted like 300 bulbs in here, some early, some mid-early, and some summer. And most of the bulbs um, did not make it. They got eaten and dug up, which is really frustrating. So um, I did sprinkle a bunch of new perennials in here. Um, I bought a, a really gorgeous bee bomb with some dark foliage. You can see it back here. And a week after I planted this, I'm guessing those are deer, came in and ate it. So that was really disappointing. My peony got broken, something knocked it over. This was a new purchase this year. And the squash in the back didn't grow at all. So I've got some squash to transplant in there, but definitely not ideal. Um, at least this stuff's doing okay. Due to squash vine borers with no flowers over here, I did sprinkle DE in this area last night. And I took all the buds off of this tomatillo because this tomatillo got eaten right down by the potato bugs. So not fun. Um, let me show you. Here's one right here. I think those are called potato bugs. So trying to save the tomatillos, I do have more tomatillos. I will get them planted and covered with cloth, um, put them in one of these rows here. So not ideal. A bunch of these onions died because I wasn't, I didn't have watering set up when I planted these. These are all the um, seed starts from Johnny Seeds. All the rest of the onions in the gardens are all ones I started myself. And I have been having things come in here and walk all over this <laughs> um, so it is what it is but these are doing okay these are going to be a lot of my storage onions hopefully over here we started our large pumpkin early but then i didn't have the space ready for it until late and so we just have our giant pumpkins like thousand pound pumpkins um, possible out of this guy. Uh, actually, I think there's three plants total, um, as well as there's some regular pie pumpkins in here too. But uh, we just have our first fruit set actually really take. Um, so really late being at July already and concerning about whether or not we're gonna be able to get more than a 7,500 pound pumpkin. So that's a bummer. Um, corn, I, 
corn we planted really late this year, which is also a bummer. And I planted the wrong type in this row. So this was supposed to be um, sugar buns here, here, and here. And instead it was delectable. Whoops. Um, so hopefully we like this one. It did get eaten because we're really a lot shorter here in the middle there. Um, some of them got knocked over in this row, so I need to um, hill them back up. Um, way behind on weeding. Corn doesn't like to have a lot of the pressure, um, so that's really frustrating. Um, and then over here, our two last rows are Silver Queen, which is our favorite corn, and the bunnies and chipmunks or whatever came in here and ate the first half of both of these rows. And this is a 90 something day corn, so it's too late for us to replace it, which is just really frustrating. So again, <laughs> what is going right in the garden is what I should be saying, even though I have a lot going on. Um, there's definitely a few things that um, maybe I don't mention enough or people aren't seeing, but you gotta work through them. We plant this much corn for just the two of us, and this is why, right? Because we have to plan that we're not gonna get corn in on every single stock. Um, so we should still have extra, we'll still be fine. Um, it's just a bit of a bummer. We'll still have pumpkins, right? Um, but they may not be the farm uh, festival winning pumpkins. There's this one back here somewhere. There. So again, bummer. I did put DE in here trying to get ahead of those vine borers. I haven't seen any. I've been checking the underneath of the leaves, but I do expect them to come here very quickly. So there's a lot going wrong in the garden, um, but it's how you handle it and how you work through it. And it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Yes, I had to buy a head of lettuce in the middle of the summer. That's a big bummer, but I can get over it, right? So it's not anything too bad. And yes, I have these little baby bunnies all over the entire garden, but it's fine. None of that is going to um, ruin my day, maybe, but not, not my week, not my month, and not my garden. Um, there's a mess there I need to clean up. And this was the other funny one. I haven't planted my half of my hoop house. Um, so that's kind of sad. This is like, you know, prime real estate here. It's got the shade cloth. Um, it stays nice and cool. The hottest it might get at six feet is about nine degrees on the, in the really hot days. Um, but down here, it stays really nice and cool with the breeze coming through. So that's a bummer. Here's the squash and tomatillos that I have to transplant out. Here's the next batch of lettuce. I started them much better on the normal three week aspects of that um, than before. And uh, this is what's left of the uh, sunflower tray. Nothing in here. There was a couple lettuce I moved out. Um, and zinnias being so late, I did start a bunch of the seeds that I had saved from last year of zinnias and cosmos. So I still have quite a few of those. I just transplanted out most of this tray and most of this tray the other night. And then amaranth, which I had started in um, and seed actually out there in uh, on the flower field garden um, that did all of the zinnias and amaranth that I started out there got eaten only one amaranth actually made it and I think it's an amaranth but it could be a weed <laughs> I have no idea I've never grown it before um, but these need to get transplanted out soon I'm just trying to get them a little bit more mature I also forgot to start marigolds this year so all of those marigolds will get sprinkled out around all the different veggie gardens um, trying to keep some pests away. Um, had a lot of carrot tops eaten. I could go on and on. There's a lot of things that I maybe uh, need to make a, a bigger note about them not working out as planned or things that I've missed or pest issues. Um, so as you see my garden, know that there's a lot of things that you're probably not seeing while you're watching and know that I'm having hurdles and issues that I'm trying to overcome 
every season is different. Every season you might try try something, you think it works last year, then it's not working this year. Um, so you have to adjust and you have to be able to change quickly and figure out what's plan B and C and all the way on is. So thanks for watching. Hopefully um, this isn't coming across as a discouraging video. Hopefully you're realizing that uh, even um, with planning, things go wrong. And so adjustments are, are needed. But thank you all for watching and, and following along our journey here. I really appreciate every one of you. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We are getting pretty close to uh, next milestone. Happy gardening. <laughs>